Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today, I want to jump back in this Class D amplifier from GAN Systems. Came on two boards. We got the power supply section, the amplifier section. The first video, we kind of looked at some signals here. The gain phase relationship over frequency. And today what I want to do is I want to start looking at the power supply. And here, let me just show you. Got my trusty old board here. The old circuit kind of made some changes to it. So, not a great drawing, sorry. Uh, AC power coming in, power supply has two sections, the PFC boost and the LLC uh, isolated output, plus minus 32 volts, coming over to the Class D amp, and we have two 8 ohm speakers. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a one kilohertz generator, just put a signal into the amplifier, so I can power up both sides here. And we'll look at one of the sides, so you can have something to reference to. And then we'll also look, have a cur uh, current probe coming from, this is my wonderful scope. <laughs> we'll have a current probe up here, okay, so you can see the current. Because that's really where the magic happens on the PSC is, is how it makes the current look. Voltage is going to look sinusoidal here at the plug, right? Current, we want to look sinusoidal too. That way, no EMI, power factor corrected. So the voltage and current are in phase instead of out of phase. All, you know, all that stuff. So we're going to talk about that in a moment here. But what we're going to do is we're also going to look at this boost circuit, okay? And I want to just focus on this boost section to see how that works. That's uh, power factor correction, all right? So essentially it boosts the voltage up to DC voltage for this guy to work. And then he has a transformer. He changes that voltage into two isolated output voltages. But I want to look to see how this guy's working. Like, you know, what is power factor correction and how's that, how's this guy working here? Okay, so let me just get another board and I'll be right back. All right guys, so what I want to do is I want to show you a circuit of a linear power supply. Well, part of it, okay? We're gonna not show the transformer here. If uh, we would have a transformer here supplying this AC voltage and depending on what voltage we wanted here, we'd select that transformer appropriately, okay? But one thing about that transformer, they usually come in VA rating, right? Not watts. It's like, why not? Because, you know, once we convert this AC to DC voltage over here, then the voltage and the current are being taken at the same time. They're in phase. And so it's watts, volts times, you know, current. It's uh, pretty, pretty basic, right? But over here, they see volts and they see current might not be happening at the same time in phase with each other. So we, we understand the um, inductors and capacitors add phase shift to voltage and currents. Uh, Eli the Iceman, if you know what that one is. And part of the problem is distortion. Uh, that's another factor because the way the currents pulled from input to output, okay? Uh, so let's just talk about the voltage. Voltage over here is sinusoidal, right? And I kind of showed the current as these little peaks right here because we're not taking current sinusoidally because let's just talk about that. Here's my bridge rectifier. These diodes are steering diodes. The AC comes in, it's swinging up here positive, so this guy's positive, he says go this way. So the positive waveform comes up here. This guy right here is negative, so he comes up here and he says, well, I'm negative, I'm going this way, I can't go that way. So he comes this way. So then you end up getting these two diodes conducting during this part of the waveform. Then it switches around and goes negative. So now it goes this way, he says, nope, can't go that way, but I can go negative. So it goes this way. And this guy comes up and says, I'm positive now, so I'm going this way. And so then you get those two diodes conducting. So your uh, current from input to output is uh, commutating between these two sets of diodes. So the voltage right here could be like the peak of the voltage here minus a couple of diode drops because you always have two diodes turned on at uh, any one time, right? So over here, you get this pulsating DC. Now it's DC, it's all direct current, it's all on one side of the line, but it's pulsating. So then we put a big old capacitor in there 
to uh, smooth that off, to charge it up and try to hold that boulder steady so that when the sinusoidal waveform drops, this voltage is charged up. This cap is big enough that it has enough current to supply uh, when this when when this diode camp, for instance. So when it comes up, this diode turns on, charges up this cap, charges up to the, the peak of the waveform right there, and then it's dropping. But the voltage over here looks more like this red line. It's sagging because it's providing uh, current to the load now. But it, so that makes it sag. Depending on how big you make this, you can make that sag less, right? Get less ripple. But anyway, you end up getting this ripple. So let's say the voltage on this side is gonna look more like, you know, if I race this, it's gonna look more like this. It's just gonna have this ripple. Well, if you keep on making this bigger and bigger, so you get that flatter and flatter, so that you can charge a whole bunch of current into them, well, then the time this guy gets forward bias, when the waveform goes up, and this guy says, oh, I'm positive, he says, yeah, but I'm waiting until my voltage here gets above the voltage here. So when it finally does, at the top of the waveform, then he spits out some current. And then he turns off as soon as he charges that up and and he's starting to drop below what the voltage is charged up to here so so the current stops so if that capacitor is very very large then that time that that happens that the current can flow is going to be very short so you can see the input current it's a switching power supply right i mean it's pulsing current in the voltage over here, if you look with this uh, scope, you're going to see a nice sinusoid. If you put a current probe there, you're going to see this blip, and then a negative blip. I mean, you know, once you flip it over, they're all going to be positive over here. But on this side, you're going to get positive blip, negative blip. And so that, create, that puts the current out of phase with the voltage too. So voltage is climbing, nothing's happening then a blip of current, and then nothing, 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 then blip of current. So the current voltage are not in phase anymore. And they can be out, you know, power factor could easily be, I mean, as low as 40%, say 50%. And so that's pretty, you know, horrible. That's why over here, they call it volt amps. Because they'll, they'll talk about volts and amps um, as if they're in phase, but they know they're not. So that's why it, where real power comes from. They say real power, right? Because the real power, you take that power factor. Say if it's 50%, your uh, real power is going to be half of your volt amps. Your, what they call it, parent power. It's a, it looks like you're getting so much power because that's a parent. If you look at current and voltage separately, if you monitor the RMS current, RMS voltage, you go, wow, I, I'm putting out 200 watts. Well, no, you're putting out 200 VA, but over here, you're only getting 100 useful watts, 100 watts, real watts. So, that's not great. And also, those big pulses of current, uh, 60 hertz, it's a low frequency to try to clean up with inductors and, and EMI filtering. It's a lot easier to filter high frequencies because you use a lot smaller parts. Yeah, with the linear power supply, it's easy to design. Uh, but you're going to get these big blips current. You're going to have to have a massive transformer to make up for the power factor. And with the power factor correction circuit, now you can, what it's going to do, here I'll show you what the circuit looks like, but basically it's a boost converter. And the difference in the way a normal boost converter works and a PFC is a PFC is taking a little bit of current all the time. It'll take more current here because voltage is higher. And so if you're going, okay, I'll take a little bit of current here, a little bit of current here, and you just, you know, so each cycle you turn on to do that, let's say it's connecting by the dots. You go, okay, I got that much current at that time, that much current at that time. And you go all the way through the time of this waveform, and at each point of time, you take a little bit of current, then you take more current here, less current up here, 
so you can build you connect those dots together you build a sine wave and it's pretty darn close to being in phase with the voltage because you're taking it you're looking at the voltage and taking those slices based on the voltage okay it's not perfect but it's pretty darn close 97 percent that's easy to get 98 percent maybe so maybe even 99 i mean they can get pretty darn good okay so let's just look at the boost converter and see how it takes that current off that input waveform all right and so this is what the boost circuit kind of looks like simplified version of course there's a control I see that's going to drive this MOSFET, turn it on and off, or in this case, a GANFET. But it's going to turn this guy on and off, and we're going to take power from this input capacitor and provide a you know, different voltage, different power out here, okay? Now, in the normal boost converter, uh, you know, you'd have, I don't know, you'd have a bulk capacitor here and a bulk capacitor here that's also low ESR. These capacitors are really going to be probably some large capacitors along with some small ceramics, something for high frequency, okay? The action is, is when this FET turns on, this is a switching node. This guy goes up and down. This is what we're going to monitor on this, on this uh, video, okay? What will happen is this transistor will pull down. It will pull current through this inductor, charge that inductor up so the current will ramp up in the inductor, and then it'll let go it'll turn off open up and that current will ramp back down through and come out this diode okay so that way current will come off this cap through the inductor through the transistor transistor turns off it's redirected to the diode and charges up this guy okay now what we like to have is this guy running continuous meaning it never runs out of current always has current in it you know once it ramps up it's got some DC level current, but then it just sits there, ramps. Or maybe right as it starts to hit zero, it turns back on again, charges back up. When it runs out of current, uh, really no energy to provide anymore. Now your input, your output's just kind of directly connected. But this is a boost converter, so this output always wants to be higher than the input. So what will happen is, so it's kind of an oh, an open circuit you know with this guy open this voltage here is higher than this voltage so this this thing will ring a little bit you'll get a little bit of ringing between there's a capacitor from draining the source on this guy and you'll get this kind of ringing you know this resonant thing as it runs out of energy it'll store energy in this capacitor and then they go kind of back and forth you just see kind of this a little bit of ringing okay but it doesn't really affect the output because the output uh, the whole reason it's doing that is because it can't provide any more current to the diode because the voltage is dropped on that side, all right? Well, on the PFC, it's a little bit different, like we were talking about before, because now the input voltage is swinging. It's sinusoidal. It's not a DC bulk voltage here that's being, you know, that's providing energy that you're pulling off. So now, in this case, this cap's got to be small so that it can go up and down with the, the input sinusoidal waveform and it's going to have just enough you know filtering just to kind of clean things up a little bit but this thing is going to try to take a little bit of current you know all the time so that way it'll take more current when the voltage is higher because there'll be more voltage over here so it'll be able to pull more current but it won't need to be on as long because there's a lot of voltage there and so but when it when the sinusoid uh, waveform goes down close to zero there'll be less voltage so it'll have to stay on longer to try to get some current so that way it can try to pull current the whole time through that sine wave so the from the input it looks like we're providing current all the time and so it makes the current sinusoidal if that makes sense but um, you know it'll have a lot of high frequency stuff on which the EMI filter or other stuff will take care of that but it'll take all these chunks of current all the way instead of you know like what we talked about the bulk capacitor on a linear power supply so that way the current and the voltage that's coming to the input are being taken at the same time so current and voltage are, are in phase and are close to being in phase 
these guys are usually in the high 90 percentile as far as efficiency so the input VA looks pretty darn close to the actual real power that's being fed into it okay all right hope that made sense let's come look at the pictures and maybe that'll help make more sense we'll look at okay so let's just go over the setup real quick here what we have is our power spike card connected to our class D amplifier the class D amplifier the outputs are tied to these 200 watt resistors we'll be monitoring one of the outputs just so we can watch the signal and that will be on this uh, pin tech in the x20 times 20 position okay so we'll be monitoring one of the outputs there the AC powers this cord I made this red and black wire and I really should run a ground wire up here too I think I will next video uh, kind of show maybe the noise difference from this to adding the ground wire in there so we'll be monitoring the current on this power cord with this mix sig set times 10 the current probe nice current probe there and then the mix sig differential probe will be tied right here this these wires right here and it'll be the switching node of the boost inductor here and the ground potential here so all these three devices these two differential probes and the current they're all isolated basically I mean they're differential probes but we do have this cord right here coming from our generator so that'll be in, uh, injecting a signal right here and I think that takes care of the setup oh so when I'm working on this I might be adjusting this volume control this is a low voltage section here and I'm going to turn on and off this power switch that's about it and I'm going to put this over here for protection above all these big old aluminums on these high energy parts of the circuit okay just provides a little bit of protection from shrapnel right so alright guys not supposed to wear jewelry right but yeah, I, I, all I'm going to be doing is hit an on and off switch, maybe touching this volume control. I, I'll be doing this, but yeah, and I might even have to hit a reset if something locks up. Alright, so the setup on the generator, I'm going to set it at 1 kilohertz and it's set at 700 millivolts RMS right now. And I think I'm going to try to just keep that there and adjust the volume. So then we come over here to the scope. Let me go over the setup. All right, the scope setup. Uh, channel one is the differential probe looking at the switching node. So I put that cursor right here, the second line from the bottom, and I've placed 100 volts per division. And it's DC coupled, full bandwidth, and it's set at times 50. That is the Pentec. Channel two is the differential probe will be looking at the output. That's a times 20. So that's set times 20, otherwise the same. Channel three is a current probe. So that's set at times 10 and at current, and otherwise the same as the others. Uh, channel one will start off 100 volts per division. Channel two, uh, four volts per division. That's the output. We'll see how, what, how we need to change that. And then channel three is the current. Right now it's set at 200 milliamps per division. And we're set at two milliseconds horizontal scale right now. And we'll zoom in. We might change that, but we'll zoom in. And I think we have enough uh, memory depth, 10 mega points per channel. So I think we got enough of that that we should be okay. Then I've got some okay so for measurements what I've got here is I've got frequency on channel one duty cycle channel one and max value on channel one channel two which is the output signal the output to the load is going to be RMS and frequency and input current RMS and frequency we'll try that so there we are they're all set up down here all right guys I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the power 
and then I'm going to adjust the signal so that we don't have a lot of power this first uh, signal I want to show you. Okay, that looks about right. Whoops. Okay, it takes a moment, then it turns up the signal. So I'm going to turn it down. See the blue signals are output signal. Okay, let me hit the run stop on the scope. Froze it. Okay, I'm going to turn off the power so we can talk a minute while I'm not running power. Now, this purple waveform, it's kind of hard to see. I wonder if I can turn these guys off for a moment. Okay, that's our input current. Looks really crummy, right? But it'll make more sense to you in a minute. Uh, but anyway, that's our input current. So that's our uh, 60 cycle power coming in, okay? It's a low signal, so we don't get a lot of the PFC action here. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to zoom in on this. You can see what we're seeing right here is these two lines here. Let me move that out a little bit, spread it out a little bit. See, I spread it out, so we're seeing a little bit more of this. So this is our uh, a switching frequency here. Here, let me... Well, right here, the cursors are on. It's 62 kilohertz. Okay, 62.5 kilohertz. Now, I'm going to move this around on that sine wave. So, it's up, down, up, down. Okay, here, let me just move to the left towards the center of the screen. Now, you see how this is kind of moving off of the zero? So, this is a, kind of the top of the sine wave. Now, we're coming to the zero. It's not quite zero, but that's kind of the zero line. Now we're going negative. Now we're below the negative line. Now we should, whoops, went a little fast. Okay, now we're kind of zero. Not really, it's a little bit below that, but it's kind of zero. And then we can repeat, okay? So when I go back to the right, see we're kind of above. Those are the kind of zero crossings. Okay, so that's just a current. All right, so this is a switching cycle, and I think this will make even more sense when we get more signals on here, okay? So now the output signal is that one. I'll turn off the zoom, okay? Now if I turn, if I just spread this out a little bit, so you can see those cycles there, I'll get the cursors over here. put that one there and bring this one over here okay so that's that's our one kilohertz signal okay and I mean we're not it's only two volts RMS output so it's very low signal very low power and that's what our current looks like on the input now let's look at the switching node we're going to zoom in on that. So you'll see those little bars get close together. And they're right there at the top of that waveform. So see the purple waveforms towards the top. And you can kind of see what's going on here. Now let me turn off the blue one. Okay. So the GADFET is turning on. It's down here at zero volts turns off and then it kind of has this ringing see how it kind of dampens it kind of goes up so it kind of starts to ring because it's the inductors run out of energy because we're just not running very much power so the inductor just doesn't have a lot of energy in it now let's scroll across the waveform just to see what it looks like across the waveform now see the purple one's coming down like it did before and you notice this thing's getting narrower and the ringing's getting, uh, it's this square wave-ish, it's more sinusoidal. Now we're getting down to where the purple one's going to go kind of flat line. Okay, that's that zero crossing. See, the, it just barely burps, turns on, burp, burp, because it's during this zero crossing. But it does take a little current, so... That's why we're a little bit below the line. Now, 
if I here I'll go to I'm right here I'm gonna go to this side we'll go to a negative waveform over on this side so you see how it gets fatter towards the the peak of the sine wave on the negative see this purple is down here and so it's a little fatter and these are more square wave-ish so it's more obvious what's going on right the crossing of of where when the purple one goes to a flat line right through there just before it does let's back up a little bit you see how it turns on turns off and then it rings this is ringing and then it starts another cycle over here okay now now that you kind of see that, let me uh, turn it back on and get a little bit more power this time. So I'm going to uh, get the trigger going again. We're back waiting for a signal. I'll turn it back on. Let me get the channel 2 up to. Turn off that menu. And I'm going to get out of the zoom mode for a moment. No, I'll leave the zoom, mode, zoom in. So you can see this full signal up here and you'll see this little sliver right here zoomed in right here here we go okay now our okay let's see our blue wave form I'm gonna turn off the zoom you can see it's pretty good size amplitude right now so we got a pretty good signal 30 volts uh, frequencies 1 kilohertz that's our output signal our frequency here 66 kilohertz this yellow thing and the purple one's off the screen let me get it in the screen so we can get a reading okay it's about 1.7 amps on our output or that's our input current right one about 1.7 but look how sinusoidal it looks now now it does look noisy but it looks more sinusoidal right okay let me freeze that and I'll turn off the power, let the power supply cool down a little bit. Okay, so let's uh, let's look at things again, okay? First of all, I'll turn off these other signals so you can just look at the signal. That's our output signal. Hit the zoom. I'll zoom out, capture a few cycles. See, there's our output signal. 29.7 volts RMS. It's a little bit of power. Not a lot of power, but a little bit. Okay, so now let's go and look at our input current. Now it's 60 hertz, so we got to spread it out a little bit more. Let's just take off the zoom window, go to the full screen. Okay, there's our 60 hertz input power. Now if you notice, it looks like it's the current almost looks sinusoidal. There is some noise because it's a switching current, but it has more of a sinusoidal look to it. Okay, let's zoom in on that. Okay, we'll zoom in. Let's see, right now my my two bars are right there. Watch them come in. Coming in on the center. That's right around almost a zero crossing. Let's scoot over to see the zero crossing. Okay, here's our zero crossing. Right there. So from this view, one amp per division, it looks like zero, right? It's a zero crossing. But then you see how there's a little bit of a current being taken from it on both sides. We're going to just scroll across. We'll go towards this bottom waveform. So you see it leaving the zero line right here down to the peak of the bottom. So that's that's the bottom of our sine wave, but it's you know it's being switched. So there's a lot of a high frequency there, but that's the bottom of our 60 hertz. Now I'll scroll back over and look at the top of it. See, there's the top of it. Okay. And then I can, if I keep going, I'll see the zero crossing on the other side. See, I'm right there. I'm right here. Okay. 
Now, let me just go back over towards a uh, peak of a waveform. Okay, that's the peak of the sine wave. Let me just spread that out a little bit more. And let's get the uh, cursors over here. And I'll put it at the bottom of the waveform right there. And I'll get the other cursor over here. All right, so there's my two cursors. 66 kilohertz, that's a switching cycle. It's uh, softened up a little bit. You don't see the square wave that we see at the switching node. It looks more sinusoidal at this point. But now let's go ahead and bring up our switching frequency. Okay, look at that. That's our switching node. Look, it's uh, pretty much a square wave. It's what we would have expected, I think. FET turns on, turns off, turns on, turns off. Now this is 100 volts per division, so it's 200, you know, close, close to 200 volts here. It's the peak of the uh, rectified sine wave, and then it drops down when it's on, and you know, so on. Duty cycle is about 36.74. Now let's just scroll over to. As the purple waveform drops down, let's scroll over to that zero crossing line. We'll see the purple goes uh, flat. Right here you see the GAN FET, the drain, it's on. And it's off just for a moment. It's on, it's just off. But we're kind of at the zero crossing of the sine wave, so there's really not much uh, current there. Let's keep scrolling over. Okay, now see the purple, that's our current at our input. So the starting to turn off a little bit longer. See as the purple waveform drops down, we get a little bit more current every time we turn on. So right through there, it starts to look pretty much sinusoidal. The uh, input current, this high frequency. But you see the transistor's starting to turn off because it doesn't need a whole lot of current when the peak of the waveform is at its top or bottom. So yeah, it's starting to look more 50% there. Okay, so we'll go towards the top of the waveform. As we go to the top, you see the transistor's off more often. If I go back down, but you notice we don't see that ringing where it turns off and rings because now the inductor is fully discharging the current that it gets. So you kind of see as I scroll th across the waveform. So as I drop back down, uh, it's on more often again. Alright guys, so what do you think? Did that make sense? I uh, hope that helped give you a better picture of what's going on and um, give me your comments suggestions likes all that kind of stuff and uh, I want to thank my patreons and for all you guys watching the videos uh, over 5,000 that's pretty cool and this is pretty cool too so see you next time when we jump into more of this okay